Welcome to my second course on serverless microservices, on implementing serverless microservices architecture patterns, a video course by Pact Publishing. In this video, I'm going to provide an overview of the course, but before that, I will introduce myself. I'm Richard T. Freeman. I have an MEng in Computer System Engineering and a PhD in Machine Learning and Natural Language Processing from the University of Manchester in the United Kingdom, which actually has a strong heritage in computer science and AI. Alan Turing was actually working there on the first stored program computer and came up with the Turing test too. I'm currently a lead machine learning and data engineer at Just Giving, a tech for good platform that raised over $5 billion for good causes from over 25 million registered users. Previously, I worked at Capgemini, where I started off as a developer. I am also a freelance cloud architect and machine learning consultant available for short-term contracts. I have over 14 plus years experience delivering cloud-based big data, machine learning, serverless and scalable solutions across all sectors, including for Fortune 500 global companies. I have presented at numerous leading academic industry conferences, events, and summits, and act as a peer reviewer for leading journals. I was an early adopter of serverless computing using Node in Lambda functions when it came out. I've written numerous serverless technical blogs, including for two highly selective AWS Compute and AWS Big Data blogs. You can find out more on my website, rfreeman.net. I have presented serverless solutions at AWS Summit and at AWS reInvent recently, where you can see a picture of me presenting on the right. I have four years production serverless deployment experience from working on large scale consumer facing website. I love using my scooter at home, but also when I travel, it's even greener than public transport and gives you a workout. Here I'm on the Las Vegas Strip in the US and the Shibuya Crossing in Tokyo, Japan, actually rumored to be the busiest intersection in the world. Finally, I'm also an advocate of promoting tech for good, where I think anyone working in technology can make a difference in the world using their skills for good. In the past, when I encouraged my audience to get involved, one of them actually got back to me asking for more details. So I wrote a blog post on my Medium account if you search for at R Freeman. Feel free to also connect with me on linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash DR Freeman. Okay, let's have a look at the course. So more and more companies are adopting serverless computing. The AWS CTO even stated that it's the next big thing after containers. So let's see why. They are easy to deploy as a stack and you pay per usage rather than fixed costs for always on machines. There is a larger number of scalable event sources built into AWS Lambda, which means that you don't even need to write the inbound integration code. The security is integrated with other AWS resources natively. AWS manages maintenance and auto scaling for you. So you can do more with a much smaller team. The key for me is that you have much less code to write and can finally focus on the core business logic that solves functional requirements. This is why there's been such a huge excitement and big uptake by developers. For example, a slash data developer survey showed that AWS is leading the way with over 44% of them already having used serverless computing in AWS. AWS started before the other cloud providers in 2014, so still has a lead start, and for me has the most complete serverless offering. The general gap that I found missing with serverless was that how to implement microservices architecture patterns, commonly used with containers. And this course will show you how to implement over 15 of those patterns, along with serverless specific principles, best practices and recommendations from my personal experiences of running scale and in production serverless stacks. 
In section one, I will provide an overview of the serverless microservice patterns and principles and how they provide solutions to similar problems others have faced. I then explore the serverless microservice pattern categories and specifically communication styles and decomposition microservice patterns. I then provide an overview of some serverless and managed services available on AWS we will be discussing further in the course. In section two, we'll focus on highly scalable paper usage and managed NoSQL database called DynamoDB. I provide a detailed look at serverless distributed data management patterns and how these can be implemented in AWS. I will start by introducing the database per service and shared database patterns, then show you how these can be implemented using API Gateway, DynamoDB, and with or without a Lambda function. I then explain two important microservice patterns called transaction log trailing and saga pattern, and provide you with a walkthrough on how these can be designed, built, and deployed on AWS as a serverless stack using the AWS CLI and SAM. Finally, I will talk about the options and practical ways you can use to secure your DynamoDB database. In section three, I provide all the details you need to add relational RDS, Aurora, and Aurora serverless databases to your serverless stack. To implement the serverless distributed data management patterns, this includes understanding the differences between relational and non-relational databases and the setup and configuration of a VPC and subnets. I show you how to configure Lambda connectivity with RDS MySQL and Aurora MySQL clusters, and we'll share how to use shell scripts to build, package, deploy, and test Lambda functions that integrate specifically with RDS and Aurora. And finally, most importantly, you will see how to secure your database by setting up encryption at rest, encryption in transit, and use IAM database authentication. In section four, I provide the architecture used to implement the serverless query and messaging patterns. To do this, I build on previous sections and talk specifically about how you can implement a serverless version of the API composition, event sourcing, and more complex command query responsibility segregation, or CQRS patterns. CQRS is typically used in microservices for, for integrating between other microservices and allowing you to better scale out the synchronization of the data by separating the read and write concerns. We end the section looking at different measures you can use to secure your event streams and queries. In section five, I will provide a walkthrough of the architecture, configuration, and code used to implement the serverless monitoring and observability patterns. I start by discussing the patterns typically used in EC2 or container-based microservices. Then I go into each of them and how you can implement them in a serverless stack in AWS. Again, I share the full code and configuration and walk through the steps you need to do this. In section six, I provide a walkthrough of the architecture configuration and code used to implement the serverless continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline. I start by introducing CICD and why it's important to automate the build, test, deploy of serverless microservices. We then talk about the AWS offering for serverless CICD. To make it more practical and concrete, we then focus on putting the serverless data API we created in the course into a serverless AWS Managed CI CD pipeline. This will help you understand the steps involved and allow you to be able to customize it for your own use cases. We also show you how to deploy the same stack in other non AWS CI CD pipelines. Finally, in section seven, I will provide details of using serverless microservices at scale in production. I start by discussing when to use serverless stacks and when to use alternatives such as containers. I give a good overview of the available functions of the service and look at customer managed versus cloud managed stacks. 
which are options you might face when deploying microservices in your organization. I then look at estimating the cost of your serverless stack, including resources, with practical illustrative examples. Finally, I look at measures you can take to protect against DDoS threats and the best practices and recommendations to scale databases, event streaming, API gateway, and Lambda functions for production volumes. The course goals are to understand when and how to use service computing in AWS. You will learn how to create, test, and deploy over 15 microservices patterns without containers, only using serverless computing. We will speed up your delivery flexibility and time to market by leveraging the best practices and patterns available. You will reduce maintenance and running costs by leveraging AWS managed services, pay per usage model. You will understand how to debug, monitor and observe your serverless stack. You will be able to add your serverless microservices to a continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline. And finally, most importantly, you will be able to replicate everything that I will show you yourself from the walkthroughs, scripts, codes, and configuration provided. I've designed the source as if I was training you directly on the job to implement the serverless stack. For the prerequisites, you should have some interest in cloud computing, serverless computing, or microservices. Have basic development experience such as Python, Node.js, C Sharp, Java, or Go, which would be beneficial for the Lambda code. But the rest of the content is language independent. You will need an AWS account. If you don't have one, you can get a free tier one year account from aws.amazon.com. Now that you know what lies ahead, let's jump right into the course.